Okay, let's dive in and let's see what the first trades of 2024 have to offer, shall we? Uh, okay, we had a three-day holiday weekend. We did not have any ag commodity trade overnight, and it was going to be a cold open, or some say a hard open this morning. Let's take a look at our first quotes provided by Bar Chart this morning. Let me bring up the corn. Here it is. First trade that we can look at on the March corn this morning is five lower at 466 and a quarter on the low of the opening range. Ooh, we have May down four. December new crop corn for this year. Yes, this year, December now. Three and a quarter lower at five dollars and a quarter of a cent. It's only one tick above the $5 benchmark. It barely has a five handle on it now. Oh boy, okay, so uh, they are not starting out like a ball of fire here. In fact, check out soybeans today. March promptly fell out of bed right after the open and it just started falling and it hasn't stopped yet. March beans down 23 and a quarter. We're at 1274 and three quarters. Just a couple of ticks from the low that was made just mere moments ago. We had a high of 12.90 and three quarters, and we're already off of that by 16 cents. Oh boy! Um, in fact, let me uh, let me dive in here and take a look at November of this year. See what the new crop month is doing. Down 22 and three quarters at 12.23 per bushel right now. Look at that chart on that November soybean chart. Goodness sakes, they have really fallen just since um, mid-November. I mean, they've given back a lot of ground when they were uh, way over $13 at that point. Well, let's move on. Let's see what the wheat market has to offer as we start out the new year. In Chicago, March is down 12 and a half at 615 and a half. Yikes, July is down 11 at 634 and three quarters. Is there any happiness in Kansas City this morning? Not much. March is down 10 and three quarters. We're at 631 and a quarter. And that July contract is currently down eight and three quarters cents. We're at 637 and a quarter. Well, let's try Minneapolis wheat. What's going on there? Yeah, we're down four and a quarter. At, uh, March is now at 719 and a quarter. July down three and three quarters cents. <sighs> let's try cotton. What's there? We're down 44 points at 8056 this morning. Only five points from our low of the uh, early morning range on that March contract. Well, let's bring in Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions, and we can all blame him for the market this morning. Uh, Brian, boy, I tell you what, uh, talk about getting a lump of coal for Christmas. What is this? Uh, everything just falling apart this morning. Yeah, exactly, Marlon, in, in a big way. Um, you know, I, I thought we'd, we'd open a little softer because the rains were better uh, this morning than what they were last weekend. Um, so forecast looking much wetter for South America. That's going to put some pressure against the grains. Plus you have uh, the U.S. dollar trading sharply higher. So it's a bad combination here this morning. So you're getting some of that selling coming into the grain markets, but beans gapped lower on the opening actually traded below their key support. And now those March soybean contracts trading to its lowest level since last June. Um, so certainly not good technical action for the soybean market. Corn slipping to new lows here. That's certainly not uh, bullish. It's really hard to point at real bullish fundamentals right now. Unless you have that weather uh, issue in South America, it's going to be a struggle here for the U.S. We, you know, you and I have talked for months about the private export sales that we've seen. Those are all hedges against higher prices. They can be canceled if these prices continue to work lower and, they, and China can, or the unknown destination can buy the actual product at a cheaper level. So th that demand that we think is there may not actually be there based off of uh, the crop size of South America. So producers have to be you know, real cautious, real careful in here, unless you have a weather threat and we don't right now in South America, we don't in the United States, we're going to probably just continue to grind our way lower here through uh, the winter months until we get into the spring. We start having our U.S. planning season. Brian, I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask this, but are we going to come in in a couple of months and farmers will say, man, I wish I had 475 corn or four or uh, 1275 soybeans that they, those look really good now. Is that possible now? 
it's certainly possible in the next 90 days that, that we'll be looking back and saying, hey, these were good prices after all. Why didn't we sell more uh, at these levels? Um, you know, basis has not improved a, a tremendous amount. A lot of producers store crap hoping the basis would, would narrow up, and it hasn't, and it probably won't um, because there's so much supply sitting on the ground out there right now, especially in the corn. We're just not moving enough of it. So, yeah, it, it's certainly possible that if you, you know, if you need to make sales in the next 45 days, it may not get better in that time frame. You're going to have to extend your marketing window out into the spring and summer months to get a, a strong price appreciation. And with the dollar strong this morning, I want to take a look at the crude oil, and then we'll come back and open up our livestock trade because there's surprises there too. Crude oil was a dollar and a half higher when I came into work this morning, and now West Texas February is down a dime at 71.55, so it fell apart about the same time the soybeans did this morning. Interesting stuff. Okay, we'll come back and we will open up our livestock trade with help from Brian Hoops right after this. Come on back. As advertised, here's their first look at the livestock trade. Let's dive in, shall we, on live cattle futures this morning with grains going in the tank. We have live cattle surging ahead today. February up $2.92. We're at $171.42. So uh, where the grains taketh away, they giveth to the live cattle market. We have April now up two and a quarter. In other words, $2.25 higher at $174.50. And uh, well, we have the August just, uh, excuse me, the June just changing to $2.10 higher at $172.15. All that uh, February contract has now is just a gain of $3.12. That changed while I was talking there, almost on the high of the day. Wow. Okay, the nearby is leading the strength in live cattle. There they go. On the feeders, well, looks like we have a fireworks show here too. We have March now $4.17 higher at $2.27.27. And April feeders are gaining $4.10 this morning at 2.33. Well, they seem to be rejoicing at the lower grain markets here this morning. Lean hogs this morning. You have the February up a dime at 68.07, and I should just stop there. Everything else is lower. April is 25 lower at 74.60, and May is down 20. All right, Brian. So the gold start today goes to the cattle complex by a long shot. What's going on there? Yeah, absolutely it does. You know, there's there's some seasonal tendencies to work the cattle market higher. Um, I don't. I'm, I'm a little surprised that we're seeing this much strength. To be honest, the the packer margins have slipped back into the red uh, because the cutout values have not continue to move higher. They kind of stalled and, and have actually worked lower in a lot of cases. And that's a real disappointment coming off of some holiday short and kill weeks. So that's one real negative here. One thing that you really have to wonder if we can see big gains in the cash markets with those packer margins being in the red. Now, we're told that the feeder cattle index is going to show a big jump in prices today. I haven't seen the numbers yet, but we're being told that there's been good demand for the feeder calves, and that's going to cause that index to jump uh, pretty significantly today. And that may be kind of what is reacting to uh, as far as the feeder cattle market, along with that lower corn board, is anticipation that index uh, cash markets are moving higher. So uh, this week's cash trade called steady to higher after strong movement last week. Uh, I think that would be optimistic to see a, a lot higher uh, just because of those cutout values are, are struggling so much and the packer margins are, are back in the red. Well, the feeders on the chart do have that appearance that they are suggesting maybe they have put in a long-term low. We shall see. <laughs> Brian, thanks for helping us open up a crazy open to 2024. <laughs> All kinds of stuff going on here already. We wondered about that. It was so quiet last week. Uh, thanks for the help. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions here. Tammy, Happy New Year. Yeah, you called it before we went on the air. I you wish said this for could go Christmas I would have got a bigger seatbelt. <laughs>